Okay, this video is going to show how to get N64 emulation running on the new Amazon Fire tablet. This is the base model, the 7 inch model that retails for about £50, um, 60 euros, $50, something like that. And uh, it's basically an Android tablet with Fire OS on, so it's sort of like heavily configured, but essentially it runs Android apps. And we're going to have a look at N64 emulation. Now there's about maybe eight or nine different emulators for Android um, on the tablet, maybe more, but that's how many are in the store. And the one I'm going to look at, because uh, there is a choice, is this Mupin64 Plus emulator. And it's easy to download for the Android version or for the Amazon Fire tablet, because whilst the tablet has an app store, it doesn't have all of the apps that the Google Play Store has. Plus, for the Mupin64 emulator, um, it's also got its own web page, which I'll link to in the description. And you can download it straight from there. So that means that you don't have to use the App Store to get this. Um, it's easily side-loaded. So basically, I just copy it, download the APK file, um, copy it to the storage on the device. And you can see that with ES File Explorer. If I just go into uh, the SD card, no, sorry, the top SD card, which is the internal storage. In there, um, I've just created a folder called Side-Loaded Apps. And then I've just copied the APK file there. So you can see Mupin64 Plus. And if I tap that, you can see um, I could just press inst install. I've already done that, so that's pre-installed. Um, but that, that's as easy as it is. So you just grab the APK, put it there, press install, and it'll be um, installed and it appears an icon here. So we're going to see what the emulation's like on the Android um, or the Amazon Fire tablet for that. Now, a lot of the retro games, particularly, obviously, originally they had a joypad, uh, maybe a little bit like this, depending on what it was. Um, so that's what they're, they're used to playing. But because it's an Android-based tablet, it does support touchscreen as well, but I just personally can't get used to touchscreen on a lot of the old games, so I don't tend to use that. Obviously, it's an option, and it's a lot more portable if you do just use a touchscreen, but I quite often tend to use a, a Bluetooth um, controller like this one so that's what I'll try it out with here but it does support touchscreen so if you want to try playing an N64 game as touchscreen it will do it but um, yeah I just don't go on with that so first I'll just quickly pair this and I've done that in another video but it's it's really quick and easy so I just um, whiz through that really we go to settings and go to wireless and in here go to Bluetooth um, Bluetooth, turn that, oh, that was on, so turn it on, and I'll pair, so I'll just turn this on first, and I'll put it in, uh, I'll put it in um, joypad mode, because it can emulate a keyboard or iCade, but this works fine, so joypad, press pair on the device, it has a bit of a thing to find the controller, there we go, 8-bit pro, press that, it says pairing, and you can see it's paired when that blue light goes solid, So that's paired, SID connected, and that's that's all there is to it. So I'll take this out of the screenshot, but basically it's B to go back, A to select, and the D-pad or the analog pad here works fine to uh, control the actual tablet, even before you get to the emulator. So that's that's what I'm using. I'll just bring that out of shot. Okay. So back, back, and back, and scroll down, and we go Mupin64+, plus. select that. There we go. So, um, key bits here really are, I mean, some N64 emulation still isn't a perfected art. There's still, depending on the platform you're running it on, a few issues here or there. But if you do have issues, there are quite a few options to try and tweak and improve the performance. So under settings, um, quite a common one is under plugins. And you can see video option here. You can choose whether to use the Glez2 Rice, Glez2 N64, or this one, Glez2 Glide64. And that's just the, the video plugin that's a, a say, um, it's a process the video slightly differently, depending on which one you go for. This is often the default, this top one, but I've just changed mine briefly to the Glez2 Rice. I haven't noticed a massive difference between particular ROMs, but it's, it's worthwhile flipping between the two to see, or three to see if you get different performance. And the other setting that I found um, is useful to take a look at is the audio because sometimes you do get a bit of a stutter. 
but then that is also a known issue with this particular emulator or maybe N64 emulation on uh, on Android as a whole. Like I say, there are other emulators, so you don't have to just use this one, but this is the one I'm going to demo, this uh, Mupin64. Um, okay, so just quickly going back to the video here, you can also choose, if you scroll down here, um, display, no, sorry, not that one, uh, auto frame skip, no, not auto, yeah, auto frame skip will, will help the sort of flow of the video, but there is an option here to be specific about what you reduce, which, where is that option? Hmm. Maybe it's under plugins and is it audio? No, it's definitely not audio. Um, change the resolution. I've got display frame rate on just so you can see when the game does run um, what sort of frame rate that's running at. It might be because I'm using a different video plugin. Anyway, there's various options for different um, graphical tweaks so you can try and improve it if the experience isn't that good. But the key option here really is this one, input. So if I go into input, there's touch screen at the top and I've turned that off for the minute, so I could re-enable it, but this um, turns off the overlaid um, virtual pad, so that doesn't get in the way, because I'm not using that. So that's the touchscreen option, which you could use, but I'm using the controller option, it's turned on, if I select that, you get a nice um, N64 emulated pad there, and then to map buttons, although it does a good job of auto-detecting what you've got, to map buttons, I can just press, say I want to map this left D-pad, press that, and then it says, Okay, press on the joypad, so on my joypad I just tap left and it logs it. And it's just the same for all of them, what do you want? Now, this obviously isn't an ideal pad to emulate N64 games because you can see that whilst I've got a D-pad, which matches, and I've got left and right, um, I haven't got a Z trigger, obviously, there's no trigger, so instead I'll use L2 maybe. Um, I've got a start button, so that's fine, I can use start. And I've got an analog button like this, so I could use that left one. But then, when you come to this sort of C directional section, an A and B, I've got, I could say I've got an A and B here, but then I don't have another C option unless I start using maybe my right analog joypad. That might work. Let me try that if I go right. And I can try, hmm, I don't know why that one's grayed out. I didn't like something. But anyway, like I say, the joypad's kind of important for N64 to get all of the buttons mapped, but um, uh, this will do, because the vast majority of games, you, you tend to just need this um, analog button and A and B, but uh, yes, yeah, up to you which ones you use. I'm just going to try and, if I do A again, get that out of the way, B, C up, left B that. Don't want to be that, and right to be that. Yeah, maybe that one will do it. So yeah, it might not be too bad, and like I say, I've got Z trigger um, just as one of these. Okay, uh, to get out of that, you just, you can actually save that profile, which you've done it by pressing this profile up here, but for whatever reason, I've got when I press save, I haven't got the keyboard appearing, so that's a bit tricky, but it remembers it anyway. So if I go back, and we're back in that section, and then we can just choose a game. So if I go game selection, now this will, you can browse to any old folder. So if I go back to where it was, originally it will open in some folder a bit like this. Um, but wherever you are, if you just go up, choose parent folder, and then go to MNT, which is, I think short for mount, and choose SD card 2. That's the micro SD that you'll put in there. Or you could choose your inbuilt storage if that's where you put your ROMs, but I've put mine on the separate card, so that's SD card 2. ROMs folder, N64, now I can just pick a game. So if we just um, look at the, <coughs> excuse me, the performance maybe on Banjo-Kazooie, we can just fire that up and see how the, the Android Fire handles that. So I've selected that, you can see now the name's there, and select play, and restart, and okay.
We've got the little FPS box at the bottom. Okay, so on that, whilst uh, the, F the frames per second is fairly slow at 20, it runs pretty well, the audio is okay, and when you start the gameplay it goes to about 30. So it's not too bad, um, it's not um, unplayable at all. I've had a quick go on the intro. I can't seem to skip the intro, so that's why I didn't show it there, it takes ages to get to. But if we choose a different game, uh, let's go for F0X. There we go, and play that. Restart, okay. So that's jump straight to 60. You see a little bit of stutter of audio. But when you're playing the game, it's no problem at all. Okay, I'm not sure how the audio comes across when um, it's being captured on my iPhone or when I upload that to YouTube, but listening to it, it's, it's fine. The Amazon Fire does it pretty well. Uh, it was not very much stuttering, just when it sort of flips between certain um, intro screens and sections, but when you're actually playing the game, it's, it's fine. Okay, what's another one here? Uh, I've got Goldeneye. I haven't tried this one yet, so I'll give that a go now. And again, this is with the Rice plugin. Um, you can change that as I showed earlier just to get a different um, take on how a different graphics plugin will behave with this.
okay as you can see there performance not great and it might just be that raw might be the video plugin but that one didn't really come across very well um, okay Mario Kart give that one a quick go I think um, this one performs pretty well you might notice a brief audio stutter but in game it does seem okay so we'll give that a quick go now Okay, yeah, that's perfectly playable. Seems pretty good. Um, not much stutter at all. So I'd say that the emulator plays that um, really well. Okay, what we got next? Star Fox 64. Just let the demo play on this one. Okay, let's give that um, a go on trainer.
Okay, that one runs, uh, yeah, pretty well. It's felt a little bit sluggish at times. Maybe uh, audio stutters a little bit, but perfectly playable. Uh, not bad at all. And uh, last one, let's give Super Mario a go. Play that. Again, this is with the that Rice graphical plugin. You might want to change it back to the default, but I don't think there's a great deal of difference on a lot of the ROMs, but some really benefit from a different one. And there's plenty of other settings. So it is worth trying out what works best for you. Okay, as you can see, although it's 30 frames per second, it's running pretty well there. It's quite happy with the Bluetooth controller and it does interpret it pretty well because if I just use the analog stick, you can see there, just slowly press that forward, Mario will just walk. But if I push it a bit further, then he quite just sort of kicks in with the run, so it's detected it quite well. about that. Um, yeah, it's a um, good emulator for this game, no problems at all. I'll just try out some of the other buttons. Just using the right analog stick for the, the C button that we mapped earlier, and that seems to work pretty well as well. So, uh, yeah, all in all, pretty good emulator and uh, good game on the N64. Hopefully this video has helped you uh, see what the performance is like on Nintendo emulation, on N64 emulation, on the Android tablet. This one is an uh, Amazon Fire tablet, so it's they specs, and, and it's only £50, so it's a great way to, to emulate um, without spending too much money. Obviously there's another cost that's £20 plus for the controller, but you can of course use the on-screen touchscreen if you want instead, so there's a few options. Yeah, if you've got any questions about how this works or um, anything about the N64 emulation here, just uh, drop me a line on the comments for the YouTube video and I'll try to help out. Thanks for watching.